Olympic shooting at a congressional baseball practice. Earlier today, the Alexandria police chief highlighting the courage of those men and women in blue who rushed into action. You can't teach the kind of courage and instinct that I saw from the three officers that are over here. That comes from within. That comes when somebody pins on the badge and they decide that they want to be a public servant and a cop. You can't teach that. But despite the calls for unity in the hours following that attack, the reaction from some has been partisan, it has been personal, and in some cases it is downright ugly. With some now blaming the victim, if you can believe it, Fox's Howard Kurtz shows us what we're talking about. Watch this. Martha, while Steve Scalise remains hospitalized after his near-fatal shooting at a baseball practice, some liberals in the media are attacking him and his party. MSNBC host Joy Reid ripped the House Republican whip for not supporting gay marriage, backing the House repeal of Obamacare, and opposing a ban on semi-automatic weapons. Because he is in jeopardy and everyone is pulling for him, are we required in a moral sense to put that aside at the moment? Reid also injected race and sexual orientation into the discussion, saying on Twitter, Rep Scalise was shot by a white man with a violent background and saved by a black lesbian police officer, and yet... Star Trek actor George Takei, who is gay, took a similar attack on Twitter. The officer who saved bigoted, homophobic wreck Steve Scalise during baseball practice was a black lesbian. Such criticism brought a sharp rebuke from Reed's MSNBC colleague, Joe Scarborough. Who would even think for one second that it is appropriate to attack a man who was fighting for his life after an assassination attempt? Jesse Benn, a writer for the liberal Huffington Post, seemed almost to condone the violence, tweeting, What's more harmful, putting millions already on the margins more at risk by a draconian policies or shooting a racist lawmaker in the hip? Others, including journalists, also engaged in finger-pointing. Scott Pelley, as he was stepping down as the CBS anchor, insinuated that the victim and his party might be to blame. It's time to ask whether the attack on the United States Congress yesterday was foreseeable, predictable, and to some degree self-inflicted. Self-inflicted? While Pelley pointed to inflammatory rhetoric on both sides, he devoted the most time to the president's heated criticism of the press. President Trump was asked whether he worried that that language would incite violence. His pause indicated it had never crossed his mind, and then he said no. That doesn't worry me. What should worry all of us is any attempt at guilt by association, blaming political rhetoric, which, yes, both sides should tone down, for a man who hated Republicans bringing a rifle to a baseball diamond. And to slam a wounded lawmaker because you don't like his politics should also be way out of bounds.